In this presentation, let's see solved questions in cryptography. Let's dive into question number one. The question is, in which type of cryptography, sender and receiver uses same key for encryption and decryption? And the options are given. Option A, public key cryptography. Option B, private key cryptography. Option C, symmetric cryptography. And option D, asymmetric cryptography. I request you to pause this video for a while and think about the right answer. I hope you are done. The right answer for this question is option B and option C. You will be wondering, right? Because private key cryptography means there will be only one key and this key is going to be used by both the sender and the receiver. If the same key is used by both the sender and the receiver or if the same key is used for both encryption and decryption, then we will call such cryptographic technique as the private key cryptography or symmetric cryptography. If sender uses a different key and receiver uses a different key, then it will be public key cryptography or asymmetric cryptography. So the right answer for question number one is option B and C. Let's now move on to question number two. The question is, the output of 19 mod 3 is? And the options are given. Option A, 19. Option B, 13. Option C, 3. And option D, 1. I request you to pause this video for a while and think about the right answer. I hope you are done. Let's solve this now. We have the question as 19 mod 3, right? So 19 must be divided by 3 and what will be the remainder? So when we divide 19 by 3, 3 6 times 18 and the remainder is 1. So 1 is the remainder. So the right answer for question number 2 is option D 1. I hope you understood this. Let's now move on to question number 3. The question is, an attacker sits between the sender and receiver and captures the information and retransmits to the receiver after some time without altering the information. This attack is called as Dash and this question was asked in UGC Net Computer Science in the year 2016 and the options are Option A. Denial of service attack Option B. Masquerading attack Option C, simple attack and option D, complex attack. Just pause this video for a while and recollect the topic security attacks where we have seen both active attacks and passive attacks. The right answer to this question is it is a denial of service attack. Actually, this is a replay attack because the attacker after capturing the information or the packet, he is retransmitting to the receiver after some time without altering the information. Now when he keeps on retransmitting the information again and again and again, what happens? At some fine point of time, the server will be receiving a lot of requests and it will not be able to handle this. So what happens? So server will become overloaded and it cannot handle new requests, right? So the legitimate party will be denied from getting the service. So this is an example of denial of service attack. I hope you understood question number three. Let's move on to question number four. The question is, in a columnar transposition cipher, the plain text is the tomato is a plant in the nightshade family. And the keyword is tomato. What is the cipher text? And this question was asked in ISRO, ISRO Computer Science 2020. And options are also given. Option A, B, C and D. I request you to take a paper and pen and solve this. Let me solve this now. What are the information that is given here? The playing text, right? What is the playing text? The tomato is a plant in the nightshade family. And what is the keyword? It is tomato. And what encryption algorithm it is given? It is the columnar transposition, right? I hope you can remember this. In the classical encryption techniques, we have two types. One is the substitution technique and the other one is the transposition technique. In the transposition technique, we know rail fence is one of the techniques and then the row column transposition, right? So this is the row column transposition. Let's solve this now. How to deal with the row column transpositions? See how many letters are there in the keyword? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? So 6 letters are there in the keyword. So obviously how many columns will be having? 6 columns, right? So I am going to create a matrix or a table which contains 6 columns. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now what we need to do, so we will start filling the plain text, the tomato is a plant in the nightshade family. 
If you observe here, there are some empty spaces. I hope you can recollect this. I asked you to fill either X or X, Y, Z like that, isn't it? So here already Y is there, you know. So what we are going to do is I'm going to fill every blank spaces with X. So I am going to fill all the blank spaces with X and that's it. We have populated the table. Then we need to generate the ciphertext. For generating the ciphertext, we need the keyword, right? The keyword is what? Tomato, which is given in the question. I hope you can remember this. In the example, what I had solved in the row column transposition, I used numbers for key, isn't it? But here it is a keyword. There are no numbers. How to use numbers then? It's so simple. We have alphabets in the keyword, right? Now, as per the order of the alphabet, as I in the numbers. So which alphabet will come first, right? A will come first. So A is given the number one. Then B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M. M comes next, right? So use two for M and O. So use three for O, P, Q, R, S, T. So T means four. So we got the numbers, right? So how did we get this? Just we use the order of the alphabet. So A comes first, followed by M, followed by O and followed by T. So we have as I in the numbers. Now we need to start generating the ciphertext. How to generate the ciphertext? We have entered the plain text row wise and we are going to generate the ciphertext column wise. Which column we are going to populate first? This is the first column. After generating the ciphertext T I N E S A X, then which column we need to take? Column number two. So E O A H T F X. Then column number three H T L T H E Y and M A I I A I X. Then column number four, these two. So if you write in this order, you will be getting option A to be the right answer. I hope you understood question number four. Let's now move on to question number five. The question is, suppose that everyone in a group of N people wants to communicate secretly with N minus one others using symmetric key cryptographic system. The communication between any two persons should not be decodable by others in the group. And the number of keys required in the system as a whole to satisfy the confidentiality requirement is. And this question was asked in Gate Computer Science in the year 2015. And the options are option A 2n, option B n into n minus 1, option C n into n minus 1 by 2, and option D n minus 1 the whole square. I request you to pause this video for a while and solve this question. I hope you are done. Let's solve that now. And the question is, there are n people in the group and every individual in the group wants to communicate with n minus one others using symmetric key cryptography. Let's say if A and B are there in a group of n people, the communication between A and B should not be decodable by others, maybe C, D and E, right? So we don't know how many people are there. It's mentioned that there are n people and every individual wants to communicate with n minus one others, right? So how to solve this? Say, if the number of people is one, say in the whole group only one person is there. If only one member is there, there is no sender and no receiver, right? Only one person is there. He is the same sender, he is the same receiver. Obviously no key is required. But if there are two people, say A and B. So A wants to communicate with B and B also wants to communicate with A. So if there are two people, one key is required and this key should be shared between both A and B. Isn't it? Because only two people are there in the group. When two people are there, we need one key. Why? It is a symmetric key cryptographic system. So same key must be used by both sender and receiver. So when there are two people, say A and B, then one key is required. Isn't it? That's what this says. Now let's say there are three people. Let's think this way. Now there are three people. Let's say me, you and Mahendra Singh Dhoni. Now there are three people in the group, right? So how many keys are required? A key is required for the communication between you and me. Another key is required for the communication between me and Mahendra Singh Dhoni. And one more key is required for the communication between you and Mahendra Singh Dhoni, isn't it? So when there are three people, then how many keys are required? Three keys are required. Now let's say when there are four people, six keys are required. You can manually work it out. And when there are five people, 10 keys are required. If n is equal to 1, the number of keys is 0. If n is equal to 2, the number of keys is 1. If n is equal to 3, it is 3. If n is equal to 4, it is 6. And if n is equal to 5, it is 10. What formula is this? It is obviously n into n minus 1 by 2, isn't it? 
So if there are n people in the group and they want to communicate secretly with n minus one others using symmetric key cryptographic system, and if they want confidentiality as a requirement that no other persons in the group should understand except the sender and the receiver, then the total number of keys required in the whole system is n into n minus one by two. Just apply n is equal to one. One into one minus one by two, which is one into zero by two, which is zero. So one means zero. So it's clear that option C is the right answer. And that's it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation, and thank you for watching.